Thank you that you can worship you, that you can sing praises to your name. Thank you that you are the King of kings, the King of glory. Thank you, Father God, you are the, the beginning and the end. Amen. Thank you, Father God, that we have the privilege this morning to know you as the Father, as Abba, as the glorious one. The one that created everything just by your word. In the beginning, God created the word before he created heaven and earth. Thank you for your word, Father God, that we, that we can use your word. Through your son, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, and you can use your word today. Father, let us change this atmosphere in this morning. Thank you that we are healed by the blood of the Lamb and our testimony. Thank you, Father God. Today we want to change the atmosphere in this place. We will not be the same, never again. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, you let COVID come for us to get silence in your presence that we can know who you are. We want to glorify you as King of Kings. No one else. No, no sickness, no financial difficulties, no COVID, nothing, Father God, that we through your Son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Messiah, will be glorified alone in this place. It will be glorified in our finances, in our relationships, in our body. Today, you are, is this day that you have created. Amen. Thank you, Father God, that you will open up portals today, mandate today, so we can step into your glory, we can step in your power, into your word, that you can use your word today. Yes. Father, your word is the alka word that's coming out of your mouth is living, is life. Father, we want to speak life in existence today. That we can create our atmosphere that you have created the day you died on that cross for us. The day you died, Father God, Halloween, through your son. That day was created for us to live today. Amen. This is our life, this is our giving. Father, we want to come. Let us be a scripture for someone out there that doesn't need, read your word, that doesn't know you. Let us be that one. Let us be that one to make a difference for someone else's life. Father, you are serious. When, you, when your son died for us, we need to become serious in your presence. We need to become serious in your word. We need to come see, be serious in time spending with you, seeking you, and to find you. We need to be serious in who you are. You are the great God, Jehovah. You are the one that is and was. You will always be in control. Hallelujah. Nothing, there is no one like you. We were just singing it for God. Father, we want to come and start acting and living the way that he, that if you are here, standing in our midst, and you are standing in our midst. But Father, let us realize that, that you are standing here because you gave us a promise in your word. In the praises of my people, I am, will be there. So Father, let us change the way of sing, thinking, the way of singing, the way of acting. Let's become serious in who you are in this word, in this power, in this eternity but you gave us because your word is in John 15, 16 you have not chosen you I have chosen you, I have appointed you to bear fruit, then your fruit will remain you can ask me anything you want, I'll give it to you Amen. thank you Father God that we can use your word in John 14, 21 he who has my commandments and keep them he is the one that loving me and he will love my father and my father will love him back and then I will come and reveal myself to him. He who loves me will lift my word. Then we will make a dwelling place in him. So thank you, Father God, for making a dwelling place in us. So that we can worship you, so we can glorify your name. Open up the service, Father God, today with your presence, with your word, with your love. Give us the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding to, to hear this word that's been spoken today through your heart. All glory will be yours. Thank you, Yeshua Messiah, that you are the King of Kings, you are the King of Glory, you are the King of Power, and you are the King of Praises. And to worship your name. In the name of Yeshua Messiah. Amen, amen, amen. I would like to bring a word today, I believe I'm not bringing the word, but my prayer is that God will be speaking. And for those of you who want to turn to Luke 2, from verse 2. Yeah, Luke 2 from verse 21. When a day has passed, I'm reading from the, the Holy Scriptures, the Tree of Life version. When Adas has passed of his birth, he was named Yeshua, 
the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of the purification were fulfilled, according to the Torah of Moses, they brought him to Jerusalem to present to Adonai. As it is written in the Torah of Adonai, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to Adonai. So here they're talking about the firstborn. So they offered a sacrifice according to what was said in the Torah of Adonai, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just, was just and pious, waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Ruach HaKodesh was on him, and it had been revealed to him by the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the Holy Spirit, that he would not die before he had seen the anointed one of Adonai. So in the Ruach, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child, Yeshua, to do for him according to the custom of the Torah, Simeon received him into his arms and offered a bracha to God, saying, Now may you let your servant go in peace, O sovereign master. According to your word, my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light of revelation to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. And his father and mother were marveling at the things that were said about him. And Simeon offered a baracha over them and said to Miriam, well, it's actually Mary, his mother, Behold, this one is destined to cause the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that to, is opposed so the thoughts of many hearts may be unco uncovered. And even for you, a sword will pierce through your soul. Now Anna, a daughter of Peniel, of the tribe of Asher, was a prophetess. She was well advanced in age, having lived with a husband only seven years, and then as a widow until, eight, until age 84. She never left the temple, serving night and day with fasting and prayers, and coming up that very instant, she began praising God and speaking about the child to all those waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Okay, until that far, we will read. So, here we've got a picture of Christ that was born, and it was custom in those days, if your child was born, to bring him to the temple, basically what we do today as well, when people bring their children to be um, what is in Hasean, um, dedicated. dedicated, yeah. And, but it's interesting if you go into the word, they were always uh, um, offering sacrifices. And that made me go back a little bit to where the sacrifices come from, because this is now where they bring animals and they make a burnt offering in the temple to, for God. So why do you think people sacrificed in those days? animals to God. Have you ever thought of it? I remember in Sunday school when, when, when I was hearing the story of Cain and Abel and that they were bringing offerings to God and they were burning it. It was a very strange thing for me as a child to understand. Why are they, you know, burning animals? You know, the poor animals. But okay, if you go a little bit deeper, you will find that sacrifices are given as a gift to God. God enjoys a fellowship meal with human beings while he's sitting in his dwelling place on earth in temple. So biblical text basically tells us that God receives the smoke. In Leviticus 1 verse 13 it says, God receives the smoke of the burnt offering as a pleasing odor. And they were going to the temple to offer to God not only their child, to offer the king of kings back to the king of kings, but also to say thank you. So a burnt offering is, is, is in those days 
done to give thanks to God for providing. Um, later on the, the, the Torah, Moses um, got instruction from God that people needed to sacrifice for their sins as well, to get, you know, cleansed from um, sin, so that they won't have to suffer or they don't have to die. And that made me think a little bit about Cain and Abel. Um, Cain and Abel were both offering to God. But why was Cain's offering not accepted to God? Because the offering that he brought was a half-hearted one. Because God takes pleasure in what we offer him. God takes pleasure if we give him our best. And he also blesses those who give their all for him. But in Cain's situation, he actually kept the leftovers for God. And that was displeasing to God. I think that made his heart sore. And how do we do offerings today? We don't build altars and burn animals. How do we build an altar for God today? Because obviously we need to do the same. We need to acknowledge Him as God. We need to praise Him. We need to worship Him. We need to say thanks. Thanks for providing for us. Everything that we have is only grace. And, and the food and the water that's on your table is grace. And we need to say thanks. And then I realized the heart saw is that many of us do exactly what Cain does or did. We, we, we build an offering table by praises. We build an offering table by worshiping God. We build an offering table by praying, by spending time, by setting time aside for God, by bringing our tithes and our offerings to the temple. But many times we say, oh, today I've got so many appointments. I'm not going to be able to sit down and put that time aside for God. Oh, you know, this, this month, I don't have much, I'm not going to give my whole tithe, or oh, I'm not going to give tithing at all. And it's, it just made me realize that we sometimes do the same, what Cain did in those days. But let's get back to Luke 2. Here was a lot of Israelites in the temple, and they were all going through the same things that we go through today. Some of them had troubles in their homes. Some of them were sick. Some of them had financial difficulty. And they were all believing and waiting for these prophecies that have been given that there's going to be a savior. There's going to be a king that's going to arrive. And the picture that they pictured in their minds was this king that's going to rule in a castle and he's got authority and everybody will, will know it's him. That is the picture that they had in their minds. And so we all sometimes suffer. We're all waiting for a breakthrough for our situations, a breakthrough from the illness that's upon us, a breakthrough for our finances that's not in a good condition. But sometimes the deliverance or the answer doesn't come in the package that we expected it to come. And just so, your answer might come in a new strategy that God is going to give you or a new job offering that's going to open. Um, so here were all the Israelites in the temple. They were waiting for the scheme to arrive. And the moment that Maria and Joseph stepped into the temple with the baby in their arms, they didn't recognize him. All the Israelites in that temple didn't realize that the God of gods, the King of kings, are in their midst. They didn't encounter Him. How many times do we come to church, or we visit a Bible study, or we go into a prayer, but we also don't encounter God? We take it for granted. But in the middle of this congregation, when they were walking in with a baby in their arms, there was one person that noticed the king has arrived in the form of a baby. So here the king of kings doesn't arrive like the king in a castle and now he's ruling the whole, and he's, 
you know, uh, delivering everybody. He comes in the form of a baby, and nobody expected that. But the one person that realized the king has arrived, and the king is in that room, was Simeon. Something interesting about the, the sacrifices, you actually had to bring two lambs to sacrifice. But there was one exception made in Leviticus 2, verse 8. If you couldn't afford a lamb, you can bring two turtle doves. So here it was obvious. If a person comes not with a lamb, but with two turtle doves, that people will notice these people are not wealthy. These people do not have riches. And sometimes... People look down at those people. But yet again, even though Maria and Joseph didn't bring two lambs because they couldn't afford it, they were carrying the lamb in their arms. So in your life, you don't need riches and, and uh, uh, material things to encounter God. You can have him on you. And in you. Okay, so here was Simeon, and he was the only person that realized that the king is here. And Luke said to uh, uh, Luke, the, uh, the, the, Luke describes it where he says Simeon did not only have the spirit in him, but the word of God says in Luke two verse twenty five. The Spirit of God was on him, on Simeon. And that's the only reason why he was able to notice that the king is in the room. And if we go to scripture, Ephesians 1 says, The moment you give your life to Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit. He's immediately in you. He's there to guide you. He's there to discipline you. He's there and going to show you the way. He's the one that's going to show you, have patience, my child. No, don't act like this. Yes, my child, have, have discipline. It's now time for this. It's now time for that. Discipline your children. He is in you. He is now molding you. But there is a difference between having the Holy Spirit in you and having the Holy Spirit upon you. And in Luke 2 verse 25, the word of God says that the Spirit of God was upon Simeon. I want to live a life where the Spirit of God is not only in me, but where He is also upon me. Because then, you will encounter God if He is in the room. Then you will hear Him. Then you will experience Him. Then you will feel Him. And there's one thing that attracts the Spirit of God upon a person. And that is called plain, old, good holiness. Holiness is what attracts the Spirit of God to be upon you. If we do not choose to walk away from the things that is displeasing to God. We would sometimes waste our time sitting in a church, sitting in a prayer group, sitting in a Bible study, because you would not encounter Him. You would sit there, but you would not encounter Him. And I believe it's all of our heart's desires to encounter God with the Spirit upon us. But that is going to mean that you are going to have to say no to the desires of the flesh. To say no to not going onto that porn site anymore. You're going to have to say no to the beer and the wine that's making you out of control. You're going to have to say no engaging into worldly movies where the blaspheming of God is taking place. You're going to have to say no to electronic games that are evil. You're going to have to stop 
swearing. You're going to have to stop lying. You're going to have to stop gossiping. Yes, you are also going to have to maybe cut relationships with people who are not honoring God for you to step into that road of holiness so that you can also, like Simeon, experience that encounter with God, having, feeling that baby in your arms and knowing you have encountered God. To walk in holiness will allow the Spirit of God not only to be in you, but to be upon you. <clears throat> holiness will also put the favor of God upon you. Favor that will open doors for you that no one can shut. Favor that will bring you into situations or out of situations where it feels there's no way out. God will provide a way out for you. That is the blessing of the favor of God upon your life. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And walking uprightly goes hand in hand with being holy. And sometimes the messes in our house, the havoc in our homes, it's not always the enemy that's attacking us. It's sometimes God allowing it to bring us to a standstill. To say to us, my child, you need to stand still. You need to come into holiness. You need to become quiet. I want to have an encounter with you. But I can only do that if you walk in holiness. Um, Stella, do you have that video? I just want you to, to see a video of a girl who had such an encounter with God. This is great. This is an important question right here. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. What are you going to get? It? Here we go. Alright, here's your last passage. Both riches and honor come Madison. First Thessalonians 4 verses 13 through 18. Sorry, that was incorrect. For the rest of you. Bethany. Oh, first for Chronicles 29, 10 to 13. That is correct. Please do say it. First Chronicles 29, 10 to 13. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou. with our heart. 
What you just did right there was experienced God's word in your life. You were living from the inside out. We didn't get a chance to see what was going on in your head. We got a chance to see what was inside your heart. Right. And that's what God wants more than anything. And that's what makes a testimony Amen. right there is that we're living from the inside out. You see, all religions have two things in common. There's belief and there's behavior. Hmm. But we're not about a religion. We're about a relationship. And we still have belief, our belief about God, and it affects our behavior. But there's a really fascinating thing that happens between those two. It's called become. We believe in Jesus Christ. We become God's son. And now on the basis of who we are inside, we behave. We don't have to try to act like God. We don't have to try to act like Jesus. We just simply let his love rest in our heart, and then it comes out. Right. Just like we saw it come out right there, Bethany. I'm Amen. proud of you. I am really proud of you. That was awesome. That was awesome. And that is how you encounter God. But you can encounter that by spending time with Him, by walking a road of holiness, by committing yourself to Him and saying, God, here I am. Please take over. Guide me in your Holy Spirit. So for those of you who also want to encounter God, I want to encourage you to spend time. And there's a song that I want Stella just to play for us. You can go and read the whole of Psalms and Chronicles. I actually want to quickly read that verse, um, the one that she just read now. David's mouth was always full of praises for God. Mm. Okay, the King David is... Uh, First Chronicles, verse two, uh, First Chronicles 29, verse 1. Then King David said to the entire assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom has chosen, God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the task is great for the palace. It is not for man, but for Adonai Elohim. Now I have made every effort to prepare for the house of my God. Gold, Syria. Um, copper of iron and wood for wood, wood, onyx stones and inlay stones, stones of anatomy and vigorated colors, every kind of precious stone and marble in abundance. Moreover, in my devotion to the house of my God, I give I have given over my private treasure of gold and silver to the house of my God in addition to all that I have already supplied for the Holy House, 3,000 gold talents of gold, of over, and 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the house, gold for golden objects and silver for silver, for all the works into the hands of the craftsmen, who then will offer willingly, consecrating himself this day to Adonai. Then the leaders of the clans, of the officials of the tribes of Israel, commanders of thousands and hundreds, and the supervisors over the king's work contributed willingly. They gave for the service of the house of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 dorics of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 80,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. Whoever possesses stones gave them to the treasury of the house of Adonai, in the care of Jeriel and Gestorm. Then the people rejoiced over the free will offering because with a whole heart they offered willingly to Adonai. The King David also rejoiced with great joy. David blessed Adonai before the whole congregation, saying, Blessed are you, Adonai, God of Israel, our Father. From eternity to eternity, yours, Adonai, is the greatest. The power and the splendor and the victory and the majesty. Indeed, everywhere in heaven and earth, everything in heaven and earth. Yours is the kingdom, Adonai, and you are exalted above all. Both riches and honor come from you. You rule over everything in your hands is power and might, and in your hand to magnify and give strength to all. 
Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise and glory. Glory to your glorious name. And just to quickly forward to verse 20. Then David said to the whole congregation, Now bless Adonai your God. So the whole congregation blessed Adonai, the God of their fathers. They bowed down and fell prostrate before Adonai and their king. So here it is saying that they actually fell down on their faces to bless Adonai. And I want to encourage you today. When last have you blessed the Lord? When last have you written a love letter to Him, telling Him how great He is, thanking Him for His provision, thanking Him for ways that He has delivered you out of difficult situations. And the whole Chronicles and Psalms is full of praises of God. And it's scary that people sometimes don't know how to praise Adonai. They don't know how to bless Him. They don't have words. And I was there. I had to go and teach myself the songs. I would go and read the songs and teach myself how to bless Adonai. And that will bring the favor of God on you. That will give you an encounter with God. Let's, pray, uh, let's play that one song. And, and I want you to stand up. And for three minutes, I don't want you to sing the words of the song. I want you to bless God. I want you to praise His name. And if you don't have words, go to the songs, and then you can read from the songs. Thank you, Stella. Okay, I'm going to try my best to do it in half an hour. My wife was wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't know what she was telling, so what she was, she was preparing. What did you realize? Not now, we was worshipping. We was worshipping, everything was okay, and then Patrick stand up. What happened? The mummy stand up. He changed the atmosphere. Okay. 2 Chronicles 5, verse 13 to 14. Then it came to pass that when the trumpets and singers join as one unity, to exalt and praise Adonai. Like I said, I haven't know what you're going to prepare. That's what I said, Holy Spirit is awesome. And when the sound of the trumpets, cymbals, and music instruments, and praises of Adonai, he is good, and his mercy endures forever, grew louder. The temple, the house of Adonai, was filled with a cloud. The Kohen, Ruach, ne? Holy Spirit, ne? Okay, ne? So, the Kohen was the people, the people believing in God. The priest, you know, the priest all that stuff. Okay. could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the night filled the house. I'm going to let you change the atmosphere. atmosphere changing. That's what the chronicle says here. So the power of God was coming in here. I know my wife is doing it probably all other women as well. One day morning she look at Google um, what's going to be the temperature. It's going to be put on warm clothes or cold clothes. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? But why? Why, why, do we, why do we trust in Google? Why do we trust in the weather? For a lot of time we don't trust in God's atmosphere. Ne? So what is the meaning of atmosphere? Atmosphere speaks of a surrounding influence of spirit. Which spirit? Holy Spirit. Or if you're listening to worldly music, there's also be a spirit. If you're looking at bad movies or naked movies, there's also a spirit involved. Because the word of God said, Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit is in us, surrounded us, a cloud around us, but it's also worth saying that the enemy is what? It's the spirit in the air. Amen. So, you hear what I'm saying? So we need to start changing the atmosphere. 
For the spirit of the air it cannot be here, but only Holy Spirit. The Ruach. Okay, there's, there's secrets. We need to go into a position of atmospheric that open up heaven, not hindering the spiritual realm. Now can, what is the meaning of that? Don't think of something else if you are worshipping. Don't think of something, or what you're going to do now. Okay, this pastor is probably going to talk, talk an, uh, half an hour now. Sorry, I can't talk an half an hour, so hopefully it's okay with you, but yeah. <laughs> That's why you come to church. Okay, so don't think about something else. Oh, I'm going, what's going to eat afterwards? No, this is not a time. How much time are you willing to give God a day? An hour? Two hours? Three hours? All day. All day. He gave his life. He prepared for 53 years. You know, he prepared 53 years to come to the day that said, now it's been done. And what are we willing? What are we willing to do? Start complaining if the sermon is too long, or start complaining if the, the songs is too, too loud, or too long or something. But anyway, it was amazing, the songs. Thank you. So we need to start seeing stuff in the spirit. We all have seasons when we are pressed on every side, when darkness seems to around us, to bound us, and we even seem so far, especially times that we need God, and it feels so far away, we have the ability to change it. If I'm saying, hallelujah, you're awesome and amazing, oh, you're a great God. It's awesome. Thank you, Father God, you're awesome and amazing, I want to worship you. Oh. Immediately, seconds, you can change the atmosphere. Because it's amazing what my wife says as well. Holy Spirit is in us, but also around us. That cloud. That cloud is with us. I don't know if you've ever heard about the cloud of witness. I know um, it uh, occurred in John, John uh, um, your word. Donnie in the blue, it's like blue, do me read in it. So they know about the atmosphere changing. They know about the cloud of witnesses. They know about a cloud of, of, of God the Father who coming down on us. Especially Patrick as well, his worship. His worship, you know, his wife is doing worship. So he's presenting it every day. Because that is the main thing, that's what you're also preaching. What is your offer today? Like I said, I don't know nothing what you're going to say. Nothing. That's what I want to tell. Are you willing to offer your circumstances to change your atmosphere in a mood of your daily presence? When we come to church, are we coming to worship? Or are we coming to give you our problems? Or are we coming to deal with situations? Or is this hindering our spirit not to have a true witness, true worship? It came even to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were as one and make one sound. They change the atmosphere and be lifted up their voices. The instrument and the music and the symbols, everything was attracting the Holy Spirit, the crowd that was coming down to them. And it was not two or three or four people there, people. It was thousands. There was thousands of people there. And the music and the instruments causes the atmosphere to change. We need to learn to come to church with one thing only, to altar and worship God the King of Kings. Because then your problems will leave. Your sicknesses will leave. Your worries will leave if you come into the presence of God. If you lay down your altar. We need to come to learn how to worship. How to praise. Joshua 6 verse 17. Then one on the seventh day, when the Kohan, the people, make God praising people, fearing God's people, blew the so far. Joseph ordered the people, shout, for Adonai has given you the city. By, but the city will be under the ban of destruction, and all that is in it belong to Adonai. Amen. So we need to start stopping like, I worship you, no, it's not going to work. Because of their obedience, they changed the atmosphere. And thousands and thousands of them, thousands and thousands of them were killed that day. 
Because the trembling of God that gave them the city. The walls were stumbling down on each and every one of them. Because what? Of worship. That was worship. Seeming and striving is worship. We just going to read two verses, then the other ones I will just mention. We can give it to you on the crew. Philippians 4 verse 6. I think all of us know it. All of us. Who doesn't? Who knows what he's telling on Philippians 4 verse 6? Da achter. Is on your Bible here. Philippians 4. 4? Yeah, not 4 verse 4. 4 verse 6. 4 verse 4 said, yeah. Rejoice in all always. Again, I say rejoice. But verse 6 said, don't be anxious about anything, but by prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, let your case known to the God. What case is that? Worship. Worship. Start worshiping. Start praising Him. Start giving Him glory. Start giving Him power. So He can come down. Then your problems will automatically start running away. Right. We were singing this song this morning. Psalm 23, verse 6. Only goodness and mercy will chase after you. Sorry, yeah. The word of God said follow, but actually the, the, the Hebrew word says chase after you. It will follow you wherever you go. Um, that brother of us um, was saying an awesome thing, his name is Derek. He said, yeah, the moment you are in and out and you're down, you fall down, mercy will be there with you. He will catch you. He will follow after you. He will chase after you. Constantly. So we need to be constantly, exactly like Derek said. 24-7. Not just to go to church. We need to be 24-7 in His presence. That light must be 24-7 with us. We should not allow anything to hinder us when we come into God and to worship Him and to praise Him and to say thank you to Him. If you want to do this, you do this. I don't care about people. It's about us serving God. You hear what I'm saying? Because a lot of people think, oh, what is they going to tell me? Oh, sorry. In that this state is not about us, it's about God. That's what happened there. Those people was one. I haven't noticed that the other one was, was uh, um, rich or that one was poor or that one was haven't got enough shoes or something. Mm. If you really want to go into that place, some of those people went barefoot. Some of those people went oh, with nothing on top here. They haven't had shoes and stuff like us. And it was in the desert sometimes where it was worshipping God. Before we come to this house, on giving this day, we should cast out everything that's not from God. Every worry, every burden, everything. Because so that you can be 100% pure in witness of your worship. We need to come without anger or resentment. We need to come without any fear or shame or guilt. Of something holding us back. So that you can enter into the kingdom of God. So you can enter into this holy place, in this atmosphere, in this cloud. Then it automatically, shame and guilt and anger will lay down. Because the word of God said, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Anger as well. Shame as well. Financial difficulties as well. So far I want to show us something that we need to come into a position. To change the things that is holding us back. If you announce that Yeshua was going to appear in bodily, bodily, uh, bodily form next week, next services, now doubt the atmosphere around this church will be in a different way. Well, Yeshua is here personally, come. He's actually every day here, but okay. I'm just putting it to example, to give you an example. People will arrive early at church because they want to speak to him. There will be no doubt that these altars will be full of people praying. There will be no space for hundreds and hundreds of meters from the church. Lost lo ones, the loved ones will take their lost, but don't know God. They will drag them into the doors of the church, as they did with the people that were lame, as they did with the guy that was, was also couldn't walk. They put him through the, through the gate, uh, through the uh, um, roof. After the Bible says, Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am will be there. Mm -hmm. I am is God the Father, the Elohim, the Dad, the glory. We should receive him in our presence by faith, knowing that he is in our midst every second of the day. When we build altars of worship, when we build altars of praises, 
and we should expect something is going to happen. Amen. You, uh, uh, you told this guy is coming with sickness, now. Yeah. Do you believe you are healed today? Yes. Cancer will go on the ground and will on his knees and will crawl out here. So Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. We don't worry about that. In God's presence, He works it. In God's presence is healing. So thank you for God for healing yes. today. Healing yes. in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Healing. Yes. 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 command to leave this body. He got no power over his body. He got no power over his mind. No power over his soul. And no power over his spirit, man. Thank you, Father God. Heal him in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Your will says, sir. Heal him. Matthew 18, 19. Matthew 18, 19 says, If the mouth of the first and second part they agree upon the top, it will be like that. Amen. Amen. The same thing can take his cancer and crawl out of here. It's time for him to leave. Amen. Yes, go. And anyone that's battled with sicknesses, anyone that's battled with financial difficulties, anyone that's battled with children, it's time to leave Satan. Amen. Amen. This year is the year 5781 of our year. Yes. The year to change the atmosphere of a supernatural being that is actually present with us, but we don't see him every day because we don't worship him Amen. enough. Amen. We don't read enough. You know what's an amazing privilege? They call it the Torah, the five books of the Old Testament. There was nothing like this. No. We are privileged people. Yeah. It's like us, it's like we, we have a manual, like if you're driving a Ford car. I know that, we also drive a Ford car, nothing against Ford, but anyway. You're <laughs> <laughs> driving a Ford car, you need to have a manual. From Ford. <laughs> Folks, yes, you hear what I'm saying? So, but we are lucky because we are, have a man with us. Amen. Of the master who created us. Right. Now you're sick. Go and read the manual. Amen. As I particularly was like, by his stripes you're healed. That's the manual. Amen. You hear what I'm saying too? If you're feeling down and out, go and read the manual. Amen. So it's time for us to change the manual, the atmosphere that God has given us, the word of God, the Holy Bible. Yeshua will respond to our faith. It's a promise that he gave us 690 times in just the New Testament. Amen. 690 times he said, I, as Yeshua, will respond to you Amen. if you have faith. Amen. What is the meaning of faith? Believe. Believe. Trust. If you have trust in me, I will heal you. If you have trust in me, I will bring the destruction into the enemy camp. I will cut up Bilia utterly. He said it. If you believe in me, if you have trust in me, you will see the devil run. In your finances, in your relationships, in whatever. No limitations. No limitations is needed in the atmosphere of God. It cannot stand there. No limitations. We are limiting God in position sometimes. It's true. Amazing stuff is. I'm going to take some few people. Let's take Moses. Moses was not the best character to be presented God. You know what I'm saying? He was a silent guy. He was stuttering and everything. But what happened the moment he came into the atmosphere of God? He opened the, the, the Red Sea and he went to walk to the king. He walked to the king of Egypt that had 600 million people and he said to him, I'm telling you now, leave my people. Yeah. Esther was married to a king. She needed have permission for him to speak to him. Moses said, don't worry, I'm telling you now, let my people go. Amen. Because he went into the atmosphere of God. Amen. Amen. So this time I want to, to ask you, let us come into the position of the atmosphere of God. What was wrong with Elijah? You can tell me, Elijah. He was afraid, he was running. He did this awesome stuff and now we're running for him. He was running away. A woman. A woman. <laughs> huh? He had the presence of God healing people and now he ran for one woman. No. Because he moved out of when he started running, he ran away from the cloud. You hear what I'm saying? He ran away from the presence, okay. Rahab was a prostitute. But but because she listened to God, what happened to her? She's been saved. God had an 
Allah overlooked her sin because the faith was in her. Because the cloud was in her. The presence was in her. Power. Viciously killed and persecuted the church. But God changed him to bring the new into the old. What was the new? Yeshua. The old was God. Doesn't say it is same strange, but you know what I'm saying too? So God was actually through Paul was presenting his son to the world. And what happened to him? Then they was being cross persecuted. But I, you know what Paul was said? He said, yeah, it was good for me. It was good for me to be prosecuted. That's right. Wow. That's, right. That's right. It was good for me to be prosecuted. He said it. It was good, good for me to be prosecuted. It was good for me. Sometimes I was without food. It was good for me. I was going, went into the sea, swimming out. So there was a lot of time stuff that tried to kill me. He, he, he said as well. Um, and I was being left dead many times. When I was standing him or stuff, he was left many times dead. And he said so. It was good for me. And now we're complaining about COVID. Yes. Thomas, unbelieving. He needed to see the holes and he needed to feel the holes. But he was walking with God in his presence. Peter. Peter was thinking, but God said, I want to build my church on you. Wow. So I want to go to something that Father God is showing me here. Amen. David was committing murder and adultery and God said, you're a man of my heart. Wow. Yeah. What's going on there? Look at a woman barfing. Batsheba. Bat Batsheba bar. You see? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mary back in the lane was full of demons. What happened with her? She had the privilege to wash his feet. Yeah. She was full of demons, but she had the privilege to wash Yeshua Messiah's feet. The King of Kings, the Messiah. Because God changed the atmosphere, and that's why they become who they are. Not what they was. So it's time for us to become what we need to be in God, not what we was. Mm. We must remember there's no limits to God if you committed your life to Him, because you need to give Him glory because His Son gave it to you. Amen. The day he died, they said, this is my glory, this is my power for them. I want to, I was doing what you have told me for 33 years. I was preparing myself to give my life to them so that I can live. You know, people, God is loving us. Amen. The devil is hating us. So we need to know who's your enemy now. I'm going to ask you some questions. We need to know that. Give me something in it. Anything, come. We need to know, I will help you with the first one, okay? We need to know that what? If God is for you, who can be against you? Second one. We need to believe that. God loves me. And what else? I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. We need to embrace that. That God is in control. That God is the Messiah. That God is our Father. That God is your husband, your Isi. We need to teach and change everyone that walks through that doors, those doors, those the doors. An atmosphere of people are important. Yeshua shed his blood for all people. And how friendly, how friendly are we with the ones that are not believing in God? Exactly. We need to change the atmosphere outside as well. Exactly. Not just here, because yeah. they need God. Exactly. We need to stop. We need to stop. Uh, um, we need to stop be selfish of ourselves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, too? We don't need to be selfish of ourselves. Those people need God Amen. more than ever before, especially in this time. All of us know John 3:16. So, so God loved the world. All of us know it. But what are we doing with that? God love is for everyone, including rich, poor. Pretty, ugly, fat, skinny, whatever, and carry on. People that are easy to get along with is for the Holy Spirit. All of us think also, but it's never like that sometimes. Okay. People are hard to get along. Just change your atmosphere around them. They will change. Mm. 
We need to start seeing people the way that God sees people. We need to get into our hearts to, uh, to know that people is more important than everything else. That even His Son, even God gave His Son for people. Right. We need to go into the position of thinking. God is able to deliver anyone at any time, any place, any situation. Amen. Psalm 72, verse 12. For He rescued the need, needy crying for help. Also the poor and the one with no help, no helper. Psalm 91 verse 3. He will rescue you from the hunter's trap and from the deadly pestilence. Pestilence. Pestilence is covered. Yeah. Come people, it's time for us to change the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. Yes. From today, they never want you to be the same. Amen. From the day if you are standing still and you don't know, and I'm not going to make my boxing from my to my. Start jumping up and down. Don't worry about people. Yes. Start changing the atmosphere. Woo! Amen. Amen. Start giving the Father the glory he needs and he deserves because he gave us son so that you have a breath and see, hear, walk, speak, jump up and down. He gave it to us. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Go and spend time with him, then you will see a difference in your life. Amen. Go and lay your face. I will lay my face. If I need to do this for God, I will do it. We need to start doing this for God. For his son that he gave us so that we can have a life. Yes. Romans 6, 22. You can tell me what's happening there. Romans 6, verse 22. See, we need to start learning in the Bible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now that you have been set free from your sinful life and became enslaved of God. What is enslaved? I'm enslaved of her love. I'm enslaved of my wife's love. And the beauty and everything. You hear what I'm saying too? So when you become enslaved of God's love, His beauty, His presence, His everything. Then He said that you have a fruit of holiness and eternal life will be on it as well. Go and read it. So we need to start becoming enslaved of him in that presence of that altar that we need to build. Amen. Yeah, it's not like it to sit here for hours. A lot of people don't like it. But we need to start learning for that. Because what can we give God? What can we offer again to him? Some mornings I'm standing, I'm saying, oh, I'm not just today for people. I'm not going to pray for people. Father, I'm feeling out and down now. Before God said to me, go. You do it not for you, you do it for me. You promise me. When in hell, you promise me. Take hands and you live. I promise you, live. Come, come now, then. He said to me, oh, this no A lot of times I'm feeling, not like I'm feeling spirit tired and fire God said to me, I'll give you the strength. Stand up, go. Mm. I'm almost done. 2 Timothy 4 verse 8. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed. He will deliver me safely into the heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Cancer, finances, relationships, whatsoever. He said there, we can stand in his beloved promises. He will rescue us of every evil deed. We need to change the atmosphere that projects the victory living in a position of everyone and around us and in houses and in malls and everywhere we are, we need to change the atmosphere. There's a commandment, I just didn't let my finish. Mark 16 verse 15. He told them, go into the world and proclaim the good news to every creature. Amen. Why does he say, not just humans there, every creature? Every creature. What is a creature? Everything. everything that got life, that got breath. Animals, Animals everything creature. Yeah. Yes. If our dog is sick, we gave him Holy Communion. Yeah. <laughs> That's life. It's working. They're still living. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying, dude? It starts to change the atmosphere. Amen. Yes. Where's a dog that was bitten by a spider, a big spider like this? A dry dog, that dog died down. I had a video of it. I want to show you sometime. I had a video of it, but I'm making a video because. The moment I need to see, okay, this dog is dead, and far about you, man. No, don't grow, grow, grow because you don't need a grow. I'll fall to myself, okay, something's going to happen here. And I start making a video of him. And we start playing for him. And you will see he was dead. Blood coming out of his mouth, everything was dead. And we even had a um, vet 
Even as the letter it said, there was no blood in his dog. I don't know, it's impossible for dog, this dog to live. Wow. And all, all I did is start praying for him, start speaking in tongues, and say, Father, I want to change the atmosphere because where you are, there's life. Amen. Amen. And the dog is living. Yeah. So it's time for us to change the atmosphere. Amen. We have never preached. Who have never preached? Me, I need <laughs> Who have never preached? Come on. Any promise? Who want to preach? <laughs> I want to give you opportunity, really. I want to give you opportunity on a Sunday to change the atmosphere. I want you to, to come forward and come after the service, tell me how I want to preach. Do you hear what I'm saying to? It's time for us, not just to stand here and sing Qatar, but also to preach the word of God. That's what God is showing in you. So we can start turning the atmosphere. It's time for the people that are standing in the background to come forward. The last will be first, and the first will be last. So I want to stand backwards and I can be first. You understand? But we need to start changing the atmosphere. Who are ready for that? Yes. Amen. You have never prayed in a, in a, in a congregation. Laura, to my a chocolate. <laughs> Who have never prayed in a congregation in front of people? We go back from that. Come. Do you like Come. First time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come. Amen. It's time for us to change the atmosphere. In the way of living, in the way of preaching, the way of saying, the way of praying. English, Afrikaans, Afrikaans. Afrikaans. Yeah. Just, just hold it really close to your mouth. Yeah. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning. We know that you love us and that we are your children. Amen. Amen. Lord, we are here because of you. Amen. Yes. Your son that died for us on the cross. Amen. Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you for everything that you do for us every day in abundance. Yes. Lord, I want to worship you and praise you because I know I'm nothing without yes. you. I know we are nothing without you, Jesus. We need you in our lives. We need you to assist us, hold our hands. We cannot do anything without you, but we can do everything through you, Jesus, because you love us. Jesus, Lord, we love you. We love you. Please be with everybody. Lord, we pray for our families that doesn't know you. Help us to bring them to you as well. And our friends, people at work, everything. And most of us, Lord, help us to open up our hearts and stop the hatred and the hardness in them so that we can receive your love and your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. The day I met this lady, she was sitting there for dead. She really looked dead to me. And Father God changed her dead into living. Amen. Amen. Yes. So, Amen. so every, every sermon, I want someone else to start praying in. It's time for us to come, come out of our kasi. Yeah. Are you ready for that? Amen. If someone else doesn't come forward, I will show you. And if you're not here, I'm going to phone you. I say, come on, to pray. come pray for us. <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot run away, Father God. Everyone's number here. Yeah. <laughs>